Hey everybody, welcome to my devlog for the Majestic, a story-driven open-world exploration game. Recently I just announced that the style for my game is locked. What that means is I'm at a point where I'm extremely happy with how it's looking and I have an arsenal of assets ready to assemble my levels so that I can put this game together and get it released in a timely fashion here. In this devlog, what I'm going to do is go through the latest level I've been building out. Just show that real quick, how that's assembled. And then I'm going to go through a new level and show how I put together my worlds for my game. So at this point, the level is assembled and I'm going in and adding the story content to, the, to it. If we pull back here, you can see there's a landscape. Uh, which was has been hand sculpted and all the rivers, lakes, ocean, streams, uh, they're in place using the water system. Uh, that's something I've gone back and forth with a couple times. I started using the water system, then I decided to abandon it. Now I'm back to using it again. I added all a lot of the roads, rough them in. They're not exactly... Um, final yet but here they've been highlighted and you can see the roads network um, in this level and it's simply a dirt path that's supposed to uh, radiate out from the center uh, the player starts somewhat in the center of the level and you will explore outward so one of the latest things um, is I finally dove into the PCG system which is procedural content generation. In this version of the engine, it's still an experimental phase, but it becomes uh, it, it comes out of experimental in the next update, which is released now. However, I'm probably going to wait before updating. So here's um, I'm loading uh, the level which is loading all of the procedural content which includes trees grass flowers rocks uh, just everything so you can see loaded now it drastically changes how things look i am generating everything from grass and flowers up to the trees and boulders grass could have been done still with the landscape material but i feel there's some benefits to doing it with the procedural generation so right now I am literally generating everything with PCG and keeping the landscape material just flat uh, textures. So with this PCG content right now I have a generalized uh, volume for the biome I want this level to be. I'm calling this one like a grassy hills biome. Um, there will also be additional PCG volumes that will add specific things like buildings, props, farms, and things of that nature. A couple of the things that I did recently to really get this to where I wanted to um, was again adjusted the sky asset which is ultra dynamic sky. Uh, I've probably tuned the sky asset a million times at this point. And then lastly was the distant vistas, the distant uh, meshes. So here I'm turning on the distant meshes and you can see these giant mountains uh, in the distance uh, rising up and they actually fit the style of my world, which helps tremendously. In the past to date so far, um, I just been using distant meshes from asset packs like Brushify and some others and they just did not match the style of my world so it looked it, it was definitely obvious and looked like you were playing in this um, mismatched world where things were not flowing it just it was not as grand as I wanted it to be now with everything matching it looks expansive and epic and the mountains rise above the clouds and it just, uh, looks like a massive world so now um, what I want to do is start from scratch and show you how to I can build this from the ground up. Uh, the first thing I do is copy my post-process volume and the Ultra Dynamic Sky assets simply because I've been tuning them so much I'm not going to do, that, do it from scratch anymore. 
So I copy them and paste them into my new fresh level. I think the main point of this is I'm not really showing each asset on how I've stylized it. I'm mainly showing that I have these assets available in my toolbox and I can simply now put them together to create my world. I'm just going to save this level. Uh, I'll just call it test for now. This is the standard beginning, uh, just a blank open world level that uh, gets created whenever you um, start one in Unreal. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go to the landscape and change the material to my uh, current Act 1 uh, landscape, which is based off of a Brushify material. Brushify is an asset you can find in the marketplace. I've It's been heavily modified. Once the material is applied to the landscape, uh, I'm going to add the grass and forest uh, layers for the for painting. I will fill the whole level with grass. Currently it's not showing up because this material is set up with runtime virtual textures. So now I have to set up uh, the runtime virtual texture for this level. Uh, go to going to the landscape, I add my two virtual textures and then create the volumes for those virtual textures. After creating the volume, now the material shows on the landscape. And you can see it's just this uh, tiled grass material, very flat. So now all of my levels are hand sculpted. And what I do for that is I'll use alpha brushes. Again, a lot of them are from Brushify. Uh, turning up the brush size and the strength, I can uh, get some mountains going on in here. And uh, I'm just going to go fairly quickly with this, not too detailed. So now I'm going to add a couple layers to this landscape, one of them being a water layer, which is needed for the water system, and the other one being a roads layer, which I'll reserve for splines so I can create a road using landscape splines. So here I'm just creating a landscape spline. So this is just going to be a road because of that uh, flat middle layer, uh, it wasn't doing what I intended. I have to put the splines at the top of the stack for it to affect everything. I am going to uh, just tweak things a tiny bit to get my road texture on it. And I'm going to have it use runtime virtual texturing so that the texture will just um, be painted onto the landscape wherever the spline is. Then at this point, I'll go into the actors panel and find the water actors. So now I have some custom ones here, which are the have the underscore blueprint at the end of the name. These custom ones are so that my character can detect the water surface and you can fly into the water and start swimming. I also have to put the water layer up at the top of the stack. I, it can be either below or above the road stack. Uh, just depends which one you want to have uh, priority. In this case, I'll have the roads at the top. And uh, the next thing will be painting the landscape. My procedural generation relies on the landscape layers to determine what assets to put where, as well as the uh, water and road systems. It looks at those as well. Um, right now everything's filled with just grass. So now I'm just going to paint some forest around the level so that I get some clumps of trees and forest assets in various spots of the level. So towards the mountains and the backside lake in particular. I also have this uh, mud layer which is more of like a orange red clay type of layer. Just highlighting the edges kind of makes it pop a little bit, adds a little more contrast. So now I'm going to uh, drag in the PCG volume that I had currently set up, my Grassy Hills Biome PCG volume. Here's a look inside that PCG volume. So quite a bit of uh, stuff going on here to detect and create all the various assets I want created. So what I do is just drag it in turn up the scale a bit to cover a wider area and let it do its thing. So it looks like a 400 scale will cover most of the 
important areas here. And um, while it's generating, my computer stutters a little bit here, but once things get set in place, it starts to move a little more quickly. So here everything's generated. Now it's starting to look like an actual level you would want to explore. Uh, the final piece to everything here are the distant vistas. Let me drag in my mountain mesh and uh, set that up here in the background. This kind of is like the cherry on top. It ties everything together here. So this mountain mesh, again, has been custom created. I sculpted some terrain, exported it to Blender, and then I created a custom material that matches the rest of my world. I think it ties everything together pretty nicely here. It makes us look like we're down in a deep valley next to these giant mountains. Uh, makes everything look a lot grander and more epic in scale. Uh, so that's the basics of assembling uh, the world. Now, the most important thing missing are the, you know, the props and buildings and, you know, debris that would be human made scattered throughout the land. So that's the next stage of um, just making the world even more detailed. But so far, I think um, for this devlog, that's uh, going to be it for now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.